Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by removing my client's current design. If you missed this video, I did record it for you guys and I uploaded it. So I'll leave that linked so you guys can check it out if you guys missed it. It is one of my favorites. I think it looked super, super cute, super simple as well. Very easy to achieve, so go ahead and check that out. I'm starting off by using my rechargeable e-file. I have her at a speed of about 9,000 RPMs. And along with that, I'm using the Kiara Sky 5-in-1 carbide bit. This one is in medium grit. I love, love, love these bits. Definitely recommend them if you're looking for a good bit. Now I'm just going in very, very gently with very light pressure and removing that existing design. I'm not going in with harsh pressure or I guess I should say heavy pressure. I want to make sure that I am just removing the design as we're going to be doing an acrylic fill and then changing the design out. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off and then we will be moving on to our prep. Now one of the things that I like to ask when they first sit down and I am removing the design is do you need a cut down? And for the most part, she just has me trim them very, very slightly. Sometimes she says no. So I'm using my e-file for this step very carefully. I am holding it in an upright position and filing away just a little bit of that length. She just requested basically the growth, which is very, very minimal. She does come in every two weeks, so her growth isn't crazy. And I'm just going ahead and filing that off. And I find it very satisfying to remove that excess tip that kind of gets accumulated underneath whenever you do a cut down. So don't mind me as I'm like pinching it off. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and trim the other hand as well. Be very careful when doing this. It does take a good amount of practice to get it down right. But I think one of the most important things is to really have a grip on their finger and your hand piece as well. I like to stabilize their nail with my hand so you can see me really grasping it and holding it very well on the opposite side from the way that I am filing. And that kind of helps stabilize the finger. So I'm basically pushing it to the right. So on the right side of her nail, I'm holding that so that it doesn't wiggle, if that kind of makes sense. So again, very, very carefully, I'm going to go ahead and finish that off. Now I'm getting right into our prep. I am taking my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file once again. I have now moved the speed down to 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my Profiles Backstage Mandrel Bit and their Purple Sanding Band in Medium Grit. These are super, super fine, so even the coarse ones are extra fine. So I am going in and just gently buffing off the shine from the natural nail. And at this point, I'm basically using my mandrel bit to kind of gently push back the cuticles. I don't use a cuticle pusher and I also don't use cuticle nippers. So I try to get all that 
done with my bits. I feel like it just saves me a little bit of time and it works just as effective as any other implements would work. So at this point, if she has any lifting, I would go ahead and take care of that. But because she comes in so regularly and she takes care of her nails, very minimal. I don't even think she has any lifting. Any little white areas are basically top coat that kind of seeped into the cuticle area and that's the growth of it. So now once I am done with that hand, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other hand as well. Again, very gentle on the pressure. E-file at 4,000 RPMs and just buffing away that shine. Now that I'm done buffing off the shine, I am focusing on the cuticle area. For this, I am using a needle bit. This one is going to help get any of that dead skin that you might have missed with your mandrel bit. This is very, very important as it can play a role in lifting. So you wanna try to avoid that and make sure you thoroughly clean that cuticle area. As you can see, even though I already filed with my mandrel bit, I'm still getting a good amount of dead skin from that area. E-file is still at 4,000 RPMs. I'm doing this very gently. You have to be very careful with these. I wanna say you can't hurt a client because they are super fine. However, I'm sure if you use a lot of pressure and you have it at a high speed, you can cause some damage. So always be careful with these type of bits. Now I'm going in with my cuticle ball bit. This is going to help gently buff away that dead cuticle without having to nip anything off. I talk about it every time I do nails on a client. It is a life changer in my opinion. It's my favorite bit. I find it so satisfying to file that off. All the dead, dry skin just comes right off and I love it. And I don't have to cut anything with cuticle nippers, which is even better. I am terrified of them. I always feel like I'm gonna cut a client, so I'd rather just avoid it. And this is the way that I like to do that. I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some swipe. You can find both of these items in my Amazon storefront. Swipe is from Young Nails, so if you can't find it on Amazon, definitely check out their website. I am thoroughly cleaning the surface of the nail. This helps remove any excess dust while dehydrating that natural nail, which is also very important when it comes to product adhesion. 
Once I'm done with that, you can see that the nail is nice and dry. I'm going in with my primer. This is a triple X bond from Not Polish. I'm going ahead and applying a coat of that, basically just where the natural nail is at, and a second coat to ensure zero lifting. Now we're going in with our acrylic fill. I'm using the same nude that I used on her original set. Taking a medium sized bead of acrylic, applying that where the growth is at, holding her finger in a downward position, blending it down. The product is amazing, so it blends very well, very easily, very buttery, so it's not that much work. And then I'm adding just a little bit in the middle section if needed. So you'll kind of see me do that throughout the fill process. Again, medium sized bead of acrylic where the growth is at, holding it downward, blending it into the existing acrylic, cleaning up any little areas that I might have over spilled. And again, just adding a little bit where I feel like it needs a little bit of rebalancing. Now I did feel like as the nail grew out just slightly, it was a little bit flat up top. So that's basically why I'm adding just a little bit more of acrylic in that area. As it grows out, you will notice that the acrylic kind of seams off. And that's basically when you would need to rebalance the nail. You just want to make sure that the apex, the thickness is in the right places. And as the nail grows, grows out, obviously that moves from the original position. So I'm basically just infilling any little areas that need a little bit more thickness for the length that she has. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. I am using my Not Polish Acrylic Brush in the size 12. Along with that, I'm using their Acrylic Monomer. I love both items. I definitely recommend them if you guys are looking for good products. Thank you. 
Once we're done with our fill and everything is nice and dry, I'm going back in with my e-file. I have it now at eight to 9,000 RPM, still with my five in one bit, and I'm just going ahead and very gently filing the surface of the nail, making sure everything is nice and smooth. I am basically focusing on that cuticle area, making sure that that is nice and flush. You do not want it thick as that can cause lifting whenever it is too bulky in that area it'll cause snagging which leads to lifting so make sure you guys are focusing on that area as well very very light pressure once again just filing the surface of the nail making sure everything is nice and smooth Now taking my hand file, I am filing the sides of the nail, making sure that the shape is nice and perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. And then of course I am filing the tip. Unfortunately, I get out of frame whenever I do that process, but make sure you flip the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and file it from that view. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this. Now we are thoroughly buffing the surface of the nail with a sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. I'm going in on these nails. I want to make sure that the surface is nice and smooth. I am going to be doing some nail art, so I want to make sure that my canvas I am drawing on is perfect. So I'm going ahead and repeating that on the rest of the nails. Now for today's nail art, I am recreating a set done originally, I want to say originally, by Chon Legend. If you guys do not follow him or are not aware of who that is, check him out on Instagram. He is a celebrity nail artist and I love his work. He does a lot of hand-painted nail art, which I am obsessed with. So I am recreating this per request from my client. We are going to be doing orange toned nail art. So we're starting off with this neon orange from Profiles Backstage. It is from their neon gel paint collection, which I am here for. Whenever they came out with it, they sent it to me. And I about squealed because I actually have been waiting for them to drop their neon collection. I find that their gel paints are my favorite. So I was just waiting for them bright neon colors to come through and they are amazing. I'm going to have to use them on a video soon so you guys can see how vibrant and pigmented they are. I absolutely am obsessed. But here's a quick little glimpse using that orange. It is beautiful. So we're basically going to be doing different layers of orange um, starting off with the dark or darker orange. I guess I should say the more dark toned orange and then we're gonna be lightening it up and I'll be sharing with you guys exactly what colors I mix to lighten it up. So I'm starting off with that using my nail art brush from Amazon. You guys, I feel it is time to replace this nail art brush. If you're an OG, you will know that I have had this brush for about five years and I officially feel like I need to replace it. The bristles are a little bit kind of crusty looking they're a little bit um lopsided and frayed so i think i might have to replace them which 
I'm kind of excited for, but also very sad for as well. So I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup with the 3D nail art brush and some swipe. Just quickly cleaning it up. So for the lighter tone, I did mix the same orange that I used with white and a little bit of yellow. Whenever you have such a bright orange, a lot of the time when you mix it with white, it kind of gives off a pink hue or like a pink tone. And I wanted it to stay on the yellow side. So I went ahead and added just a little bit of yellow to kind of complement it and neutralize it a little bit. And I love this orange, it's so, so pretty. So I am using Neon Orange from Profiles Backstage, White Gel Paint from Profiles Backstage, and their Neon Yellow mixed together to get this really pretty orange tone. So I'm just following the original design that we did. Same concept, same sort of thickness, I guess I should call it. And then we're gonna be moving our way lighter. Make sure you are curing in between each line. Sorry, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> but I was doing the exact same design on both hands. So whenever I finished one hand, she'd have that in the light and then I'd be working on the other hand. But I'm just showing you guys a process on one just because it kind of makes it go by a little bit quicker and you really don't need to see the process on both hands. So I'm gonna be popping that in the light and moving on to the lighter color. Now for the third tone of orange, I just took the second color that I mixed and added a little bit more white to it. So that keeps the same tones, the same hues, and it just lightens it up just a smidge. And so then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the rest of the nails, following the original design path, and then curing it in the light for a minute. And I'm sure you guys get the gist of it. I am taking the third color that I mixed and adding more white to it to make the palest color. <laughs> and it's the last one, it's the lightest one. It's basically almost white, but it still complements the other oranges. Again, following that original design and then curing it in the light, I am obsessed with this. I think it's super cute. Orange is my favorite color for the summer. So I was super excited to recreate this as well. My lens could have been a little bit more clean, but with this pregnancy, I get really shaky randomly and it just decided to happen when I was doing her nail art. So I am going ahead and finishing these off and making sure that I am fully curing these in the light for a minute, up to two minutes to ensure that all the layers are fully cured before we top coat. Make sure it is all cured before you top coat or everything's gonna smear. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna be top coating the nails. Call 
Now, once all the layers of nail art are nice and dry, I'm going in with my top coat. I absolutely love getting to the top coat portion of doing this client's nails because I just never know what she's gonna pick. She doesn't have a favorite, and I love that sometimes she makes me do both. So I'm sure you guys have noticed that on my channel already. I am actually doing matte for today's video. She chose matte. We both feel like it makes neons pop, but also kind of tone it down, if that makes sense. So we figured that would be our best bet. I'm using matte it from Not Polish, applying a thin layer of that, making sure that I'm really pressing it into the portion that has nail art because you want it to really seep into all the creases and little divots that that gel paint might have created. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other nails as well, placing it back into the light for a full minute. I like to do two minutes just to be safe. So we can start again. Wanting down a second chance. I'm too selfish for that. I let you fall again. Now that you know that. I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was. And I feel misunderstood, cause I'm dying hard to love. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My actions, they haunt me. And the finishing touch is always some good cuticle oil. This one is from Profiles Backstage, my favorite one. It smells so good. It seeps right into the skin without leaving an oily cast. Highly recommend it. My go-to and my absolute favorite compared to any other cuticle oils that I have tried. I'm going to go ahead and gently rub that around her skin, making sure that I am not getting it on the matte nails because it will... Kind of make them look a little bit shiny. So very, very carefully rubbing that in. And then I kind of run my fingers down the sides of the nail sometimes to make sure that everything is nice and perfect. Repeating that on the other hand as well. And of course, we're taking out Peter for the pictures and the finished video. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. And I will see you guys later. Bye.